Hello everyone, welcome back to another Shopify tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you the easiest way to add a countdown timer to your product pages. And guess what? You'll also learn how to add a countdown timer to the announcement bar of your website. But before we dive in, do you know why countdown timers are so effective? Countdown timers create urgency. They grab your customers' attention and encourage them to take action, whether it's making a purchase or taking advantage of a limited time offer. It's a simple yet powerful tool to boost sales and conversions. That's right. To add a countdown timer to your product pages, we'll need to integrate an app. From your Shopify dashboard, click on Settings. Then go to Apps and Sales Channels. On this page, you'll see a Shopify App Store button in the top right corner. Click on that to open the Shopify App Store. Once you're on the Shopify App Store page, use the search bar to look up GSC Countdown Timer. This is the app we'll be using to add a countdown timer to our product pages. You'll see the app pop up at the top of the search results with an install button. Go ahead and click that button to install the app. Click install one more time to complete the installation. On the app dashboard page, click on the create widget button. You'll see three options. Small. This is the best choice if you want to add a timer under the product details. Bar. Choose this if you want to create a countdown timer for the announcement bar. Large. Use this option to create a completely new section for the countdown timer. For this tutorial, I'll be adding a countdown timer to the product pages, so I'll select small. Simply click on the small button to create a countdown timer for your product pages. In the general tab, you'll see a variety of preset options for the countdown timer. When you scroll down, you'll also find settings to customize the topography and set the breakpoint for the timer. You can adjust these settings to fit your store's design and requirements. Now, let's scroll back up to select a preset. For this tutorial, I'm going to choose the second preset. Simply click on it to select it, and then let's move on to the Content tab. In the Content tab, you'll first see the Components section, which includes five components. First component is for the main title for your countdown timer. Second component is for a smaller text option below the heading. Timer component is for the, the countdown clock itself. Button component. This is hidden by default but can be enabled if needed. Coupon label component to adjust coupon label text. Let's start by selecting the heading component. Just click on it to select it. Under the heading component, you can update the text to something else, like Black Friday sale. You can also change the font family if needed. By default, it automatically uses the fonts from your store, so I'll leave it as is. You'll also find a variety of font customization options that you can experiment with, but for this tutorial, I'll stick with the default settings. When you scroll down, you'll see options to change the heading color and adjust the padding for the countdown timer. For example, let's add 10 for the top and bottom padding, and 15 for the left and right sides. You can preview your changes on the right side as you make them. For the mobile padding, you can leave it as it is. The default settings are usually optimized for mobile devices, so there's no need to make any changes here. That's it for the heading component. Now, scroll back up and click on the back icon so we can check out the options for the second component. The second component offers the same options we saw in the heading component. You can update the text, adjust the font style, select the color, and tweak the padding. Feel free to experiment with these settings to match your store's design. Now, let's scroll back up and take a look at the options available in the timer component. In the timer component, the first option you'll see is layout, which gives you two choices, separate and solid. Separate. This layout displays the timer with individual background colors for each time unit, and as you can see, there's no background color for the separator colons. Solid. This layout applies the background color across the entire timer, including the separator colons. I think the separate layout looks cleaner, so let's go with that. Next, we have the time units option. If you want to display days, hours, minutes, and seconds, select the first option. For just hours, minutes, and seconds, choose the second option from the dropdown. And if you only need minutes and seconds, select the third option. For this tutorial, let's select the first option, which shows days, hours, minutes, and seconds. You can also adjust the width of the timer. I recommend setting the width to 90% for both desktop and mobile for a balanced look. 
All the other options are similar to what we've discussed in the previous components. You can update the font family, adjust the font style, change the color, resize the font, set a background color, and tweak the spacing. Customize these settings to align with your brand guidelines and store requirements. Now, let's go back and select coupons. If you want to display a button, you can enable it here. However, since we're placing this widget on the product pages, we don't really need a button for this timer. That said, if you're creating a countdown timer for the announcement bar or a large banner, I highly recommend adding a call to action button. It's a great way to encourage people to explore your store items. All right, let's click on coupons. Here, if you're running a sale or promotion, make sure to update the label and add your discount code in the discount code field. For example, if you're offering 10% off, update the label to say 10% and enter your discount code in the field below. When you scroll down, you'll see options to customize the topography, text color, width, and spacing. For this tutorial, I'll leave these settings as they are. Now, let's move on to the next tab, which is Timer. In the Timer tab, you'll see two options. Fixed Date. This is a countdown timer that counts down to a specific date and time. With this type, all visitors see the same time remaining, regardless of when they visit the website. Evergreen. This is a dynamic countdown timer. It creates a unique countdown based on when an individual visitor lands on the page. Each visitor sees their own personalized timer, starting fresh when they visit. For this tutorial, let's select the evergreen option because I want all my visitors to have 72 hours to shop and get a discount. The great thing about this option is that it will also display the timer to new visitors who visit your website after 4 to 5 days, ensuring everyone gets a personalized countdown experience. Next, you'll see a When Timer Ends drop-down, where you can choose what happens when the timer runs out. Here are the four options. The first option is Do Nothing. The timer stays on the page without any changes. Second option is Hide Timer. The timer disappears once the countdown ends. Third option is Start Timer Again. The timer resets and starts counting down again. Fourth option is Start Timer Again in one day. The timer resets but begins after a 24-hour period. For this tutorial, I'll select Hide Timer because I don't want the timer to display after the time ends. Once you've made your selection, click the Save button at the top right corner to save your changes. Next, click Copy ID to copy the widget's ID. Finally, click the Add to Theme button and select Product Page to add this widget to your product pages. Now, I've been redirected to the default product page template and this app has automatically added a GSC countdown timer widget block for me on the left side. Just click on the widget, and under widget ID, paste the ID we copied earlier. As you can see, the countdown timer now appears on the right side of the screen. Next, let's drag this widget to the appropriate position. Simply drag and drop the block to where you want the timer to be displayed. In my case, I want to place it right above the buy buttons. This way, visitors can immediately see that we're running a promotion creating a sense of urgency to make a purchase. Now we've successfully added the widget to the product pages. Don't forget to click the Save button to ensure your changes are applied. If you want to add the countdown timer to the announcement bar, simply head back to the Shopify dashboard and click the close icon at the top right corner. Now, click on the Create Widget button, and this time, select Bar. Here, you'll see the same tabs we discussed earlier during the creation of the first countdown timer. In the general tab, you can select the preset and set the position of the announcement bar. In the content tab, you can update the heading, subheading, button text, and discount code. In the timer tab, you can adjust the time and its behavior. In the targeting tab, you can select the pages where you want this announcement bar to be displayed. For this tutorial, I'm going with the default settings and text. Now, just enable the bar, click the Save button, and head back to your Shopify store to preview the countdown timer bar. And there you have it. As you can see, we've successfully created a countdown timer bar for the store as well. Thank you so much for watching today's tutorial on RS Digitals. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more Shopify tips and tutorials. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, 
drop them in the comments below, I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, keep building and growing your amazing stores with RS Digitals.